Hello, beautiful people. Honest Am here, the creator and writer of the Honest Thesis newsletter, a bi-weekly newsletter geared towards millennials who are truly trying to get their shit together. And I am here for another daily motivational video where we use the tarot to become the alchemist of our lives. A little bit about me. I do not just use the tarot. I use God and cusses in the same sentence and I may mispronounce some things, but if it does not stop Charlamagne the God, it will not stop me. Y'all, my titties look huge in this. Sorry. <laughs> All right, angel number 27. Guys, check out the description box below. And there's always additional information, messages, as well as information about me at honestlysis.com. If you ever want to learn more about that, dive into our archives, help me donate in any way, all that information is down below. All right, y'all. So, God, what affirmation do we need to keep at the top of our mind um, as we go through this moon cycle um, for this new moon in Taurus, God, what do we need to know? Not even in this moon cycle in Taurus, I'll take that back. Just God, what do we need to know for this month of May? What is an affirmation that we need to keep in the center of our mind in the month of May, God? Make it as plain as possible. Ooh. <laughs> God is so funny. I love God. Ezra 120. Um, I am resilient. If my mood wavers, it does not stay that way permanently. I allow myself to feel my feelings until I can refocus my thoughts on the positive. I do not judge myself for being human. I am resilient. And so God is saying that in this month of May, um, if there's things coming up, if you find yourself emotional, God is saying, just allow yourself to be emotional. Like accept that about yourself. Don't beat yourself up. And honestly, it's so funny that that came out because I actually found myself talking to my therapist about that. Like I was like super emotional. But the difference was I wasn't like shying away from my emotions. Like I would just allow myself to just cry. And then I would ask myself like, well, what am I so sad about? Like say I was watching Pose and I was just like, oh, I just can't wait to find a love that will stand up for me and that will fight for me and all of this stuff. Or I find myself getting sad and I'm like, oh, like I just can't wait till, you know, I find my tribe and the people who get me. So it's like your emotions are coming up to just... um they're really coming up to give you information. And so instead of shying away from it or being ashamed of it, really allow yourself to lean into your emotions this month. And when you do remember um, that you're only human and you're not, you shouldn't allow yourself, don't beat yourself up for being emotional. It's probably, you probably need to cry. If you want to cry, like let yourself cry because those tears are really cleansing and releasing whatever is coming up and allowing it to pass. So just allow yourself to cry, get emotional, whatever. I always love when I always know I have a really good yoga session if I end up crying by the end. <laughs> uh, angel number 234. Uh, another message that came out is I'm discerning. I have I love myself enough to say no to the people in situations that don't serve my highest good. I am discerning. And so I feel like these two messages actually go hand in hand. Maybe, you know, you have made this choice last month that you are going to, you know, you're committed to this path. And that means that you can no longer associate with certain people or you can't go around certain environments and that is going to make you feel sad. Um, also, we have we don't talk about that enough in this spiritual community and newly awakening and going after your dreams, whatever you want to call it, because whether you believe it or not, all three of those things are the same thing. Um, but we don't talk about that grief process that happens when you are shedding your old life where you're realizing um, sometimes you're even grieving for yourself. Like you realize like, damn, like I didn't, you know, I didn't love myself enough or I didn't have self-esteem or I allowed treat people to treat me any type of way. And sometimes your ego can get in the way and you can feel like, you know, it can either go your, when your ego get in the way, you get angry about it, but then you can also get really sad about it. And you like, why did I allow that to happen? And I feel like God is saying, angel number 411, allow yourself to go process all of those emotions because you need to get it out. You need to acknowledge it um, and don't beat yourself up for it. So I really feel like these two messages go hand in hand with I am discerning and I am, um, and I'm resilient. The last message that God is saying underneath all of this is to take moments of stillness. I understand there are times to be to move. There are times to be still. In my stillness, I seek greater understanding. I take time to rest and contemplate. I strive for un unconditional happiness here in the presence. And I am still. And so God is telling you that when you do find yourself in those moments, 
Now, I really want you for this month of May, the message that I'm really hearing clearly is that you need to pay attention. Think think about what you're thinking about, especially in those moments that when you're like finding yourself super anxious, finding yourself, um, yeah, anxious is coming up a lot, fearful. Ask yourself, am I dealing with something in the present or am I projecting over in the future? And if you're projecting in the future, I want you to come back into the present moment. A really good way to come back into the present moment is doing some uh doing some deep breathing you can just put your hand on your belly one hand on your heart one hand on your belly and then just breathe into your belly just take a break now <sighs> don't that feel good what I realize is when I'm really upset, sometimes I'm like so clenched up that I'm not even like breathing. And sometimes just taking that moment to just taking five deep breaths, just breathing into your stomach, breathing, allowing your hand, breathing into your hand and then just allowing yourself to feel your heartbeat just to remind yourself I'm here, I'm now. Sometimes our mind can just rush ahead of us and get us and, you know, get us worried about what's going to happen in or what da, 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 da. it's like, especially when you're making these big shifts, you have to be patient with yourself. When I was going through all of these emotions and I was, you know, feeling what I was doing was I was looking at my current situation and I was being like, well, what if it doesn't get better? And what if I be by myself forever? And what if I don't ever find anybody? And all of that is. That's not God. That's fear speaking. That's doubt speaking. And God is saying he understands it because that's just the part of being human. You shouldn't beat yourself up because you're not 100% confident all the time. There's going to be times when you doubt yourself. There's going to be times when you're unsure. But really what matters is how you overcome those moments. If you take a moment of stillness, if you just, be, if you just ask yourself, am I doing the best that I can do? Did I do the best that I can do? And if you can't, if you say, you, am I doing the best that I could do? Did I do the best that I could do? What can I do to make myself move one step further? That's all you can do, angel number 712. Then you got to give it over to God. Don't beat yourself up because you stumble a little bit. It's okay. You probably, we, this is what we have to understand. If you are, I'm what, I'm 32, right? I didn't start having my spiritual awakening. I hate that word. <laughs> I didn't start having my spiritual awakening until I was, what, 22, 23? And so that's 23 years of my life. And even more, because I really have just recently started to for real clear some up stuff up. So let's say 29. 29 years of my life where I was just on some fuck stuff, where I was living in fear, where I allowed, uh, where I was chasing love, where I had no self-esteem, where I allow opinions of others to rule my life for 29 years, right? And now I'm trying <laughs> to get myself in a place where I take ownership of my life, where my opinions are first where I don't chase love, where I allow love to come to me. I had 29 years of practice. It's going to take some time to do it right. You want to get it all right right now. And you have to understand that's not even the point of this process. It's a journey. The, pro the purpose of your transformation, the, journey, the purpose of your spiritual awakening is for you to have a journey inwardly. For you to get closer to God, get closer to the spiritual side, get close, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's about that. In your mood swings, your ups and downs, that's all a part of the process. I was talking to my therapist about this and I was like, you know, I started off the call. I didn't even want to do therapy. I was just like, girl, I am not feeling it. I have been in my feelings. Like I'm having a case on the Mondays. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, I'm being human. <laughs> I'm just being a human. This was a part. This is this is what it means to live as a spiritual being in a physical world. Because the, the frustration is my mind. Because my mind for 29 years have been able to lead. I've been allowing my mind to lead. And right now I'm telling my mind, take a fucking back seat, girl. You, <laughs> you're smart as hell, but take a back seat. Because I'm trying to let this heart lead us. I'm trying to let my soul lead us. 
And so it's like, there's moments that come up where my mind is trying to make sense of it. Like, yo, I, I talk over here. I was literally Googling, is there a such thing as coincidence? Because shit was happening in my life. But literally, shout out to Coaster. I don't know who the fuck owned this app. <laughs> Angel number 959. But like literally when I was in that moment and having that tense tailspin and having these moments of doubt, it was like everything that you des um everything that you desire cannot be achieved through logic. And that's what we have to understand. We're newly we're we're new to this. We're new to trying to understand and work with God, you know? So allow yourself to, you know, take that time to really, you know, understand that process. Angel number 1032. All right, let's hurry up. Resilient. With under resilient, we have prayer. God is saying, that's why you talk. That's what prayer is. You know, people want to get on your knees. You want to do this. I just talk to him like, bro, what the fuck? What's going on, God? I'm about to lose it. I can't take it. This is going on. This, this, this. And in those moments, and the problem is because you don't want to say that to God. You don't want to tell him like, yo, I feel like you let me down. I feel like you do not have my back, that you're not listening to me. But you know, like you, you haven't said that to him because if you said it to him, he will show you how he has your back. He will show you how he hears your prayer. You're not going to believe this story. And I wish I would have took a picture. Angel number 11, 17 had a total breakdown. Crying on my bathroom floor, doors, you know, total darkness, just crying on the bathroom floor. And I'm like, what the fuck, God? I am trying my best. I am doing what you asked me to do, but you just got me alone. And this is not fair. Like, if you are, if you got my back, you need to show me. You need to show me you got my back because this is so fucking hard. You don't get how hard this is. Like, I'm literally talking to God like that. Like, you don't understand how fucking hard it is being a human. Like, Jesus, I literally said, Jesus, help me. Y'all help me. Help me understand how to do this walk because this shit is difficult. And I, I, I don't know if I've told, well, if you've been on the channel, damn, I just put them back, but I've been collecting these uh, feathers. Like I've been having a lot of feathers. I actually just found a dollar, been, been, they've been coming into my path. And so Sunday, my dog was just acting weird. And like, he made me like, it was raining all day. But it was like, he kind of like forced me to go take him on a longer walk. Like it kind of like cleared up a little. So I took him on a longer walk, age number 12, 25. And so we get on this street that I had no intentions on going down, but I end up, so I'm just, I just go down the street and there are black and white feathers every fucking where. Like it looked like, and I'm pretty sure it's some fucking cats on this street that's killing birds, but there was black and white feathers everywhere. Like I was just kind of like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? And literally with the black and white feathers, it, it, it means that um, change is coming. And so it was like, God was like, look, calm the fuck down. Like, I got your back. I hear you. It's coming. Stay patient. Then I was walking him again and I saw a white, uh, a white, um, a white feather. And that means that your spirit, the angels and your spirit guys are watching you. Like, even though you feel alone, we are here. So again, I told them like, look, I'm about to fucking lose it. <laughs> and they were like, oh, hold on, let's help her out. And it's not even like they're panicking. I feel like they want that. Like they need, you have to realize it's a two way street. So they need you to communicate what's going on so that they can tell you how they can help you. True story, last true story. Oh my God. Um, I am discerning and impassive. Look at that. That's telling you. God is saying you got to be mindful about which way you go. Don't he look like he's saying, hey, hey, which way you going to go? Are you going to go this way or are you going to go that way? God is saying be mindful of where you're putting your attention, who you're spending your time with. Say no to those things that no longer serve you. Um, damn, I forgot the story I was about to tell y'all. Oh, at the top of the year, um, you know, I do my little New Year's ritual, made my little meal. Um, but this year I just really just sat down and I sat on my altar and I just talked to them like, Hey, this is what I want to do. This is where I'm trying to go. Blah, blah, blah. These are my plans for this year. Do you agree? <laughs> yes or no? Like, and, and, it, and it sounds crazy and you're going to feel like, what the fuck am I doing? Like I'm talking to nobody, but it's like, shit came in. I got intuitive hits. Like they told me to do certain things. They told like, you know, like I got, I, I got information. 
it's up to you. Like, you know, like I can say this all the time. I can, I can, I can sit here and talk until I'm blue in my face, but until you decide to like really see what God is about, you know, you're only going, you're always going to be like, Oh, I wonder that would be nice. Like, I don't know about you, but it's like, it's not enough for me to see other people doing it. I need to see it for myself. Angel number 1505. And the last thing for uh, stillness, we got grief. And I feel like God is just saying, take that time to, you know, grieve the things that, you know, you didn't get. Grieve the dreams that you, um, just grieve it. Grieve it. If your childhood was shitty, grieve it. Uh, if you were, if you, if you, you know, you never set yourself up for success in relationships, grieve it so that you can move on. The card I'm going to focus on is this impasse, 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 impasse. Don't y'all don't call me stupid. <laughs> I feel like that Kanye clip, like, oh God, I talk about being so smart and I can't even pronounce this word. I have challenges with literature. Like, I just feel like I was not in school during that time. Like, I don't know what happened. And maybe I shouldn't say literature because I am a whole ass writer. Pronouncing, like, I can't sound shit out. Like, I don't know where I was at when they was learning that shit. But I could not sound shit out for the life of me. Like, it's insane. And it's low-key hella embarrassing. <laughs> I can't sound shit out. Like, what does that mean about me? <laughs> I don't know how to sound shit out. I don't know. That's Anyways. <clears throat> And look, now I feel insecure about it. So let me look this up. <laughs> oh my God. Angel number 303. Let me see. I feel so silly because I don't know how to say this word. And it looks so simple. Like, I'm like, why can't I say it? Impasse. Impasse. <laughs> Angel number 1641. Okay, impasse. <clears throat> well, I guess while we're here, let's just see what the definition of it is. A situation in which no progress is possible, especially because a disagreement or a deadlock, which I was telling you before, I love myself a no to say no. I love myself to say no to the people in situations that don't serve my hardest good. All right, so let's get here. Our impasse. This, I don't like silent ease. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Y'all don't, you better not be judging me now. Okay, we up here building. Are you judging me because I done misspelled a word? <laughs> Angel number 1717. All right. Learn to observe your emotions. So this is actually dealing with our uh, sacral chakra, which is, who, baby, I had to do some work on my sacral chakra. The orange card represents our emotions and how we relate to them. In the second chakra, you learn, you learn emotional discipline if you choose. You need to master the skill of steering your emotions as you will steer a ship on the high seas. This is very important in manifestation and y'all don't ever believe me, but I keep telling you your emotions like you, there is no becoming an alchemist without connecting to your emotions. Like your emotions is the fucking blueprint. Like it's going to get you there. So trust your emotions, allow yourself to feel your emotions. Um, blah, blah, blah. Next observe. I'm going to read this all because this seems hella important. Angel number 1808, <clears throat> So this is all about being emotional. The orange cards reveal your emotional experience in a particular situation. If you are struggling with your feelings, look back to the red chakra, the root chakra for the answer. Why? Because remember I was telling you before, because your source, because you source your emotional experience from a particular foundation or belief created in your root chakra. This helps you un to understand where your emotions are coming from. So I was watching Pose. Um, it was that whole scene with, um, you know, uh, Blanca was standing up to, oh, I don't know if you watched the new season, spoiler alert, but Blanca knew Boo was standing up to his mama and I got like super emotional about it. And I feel like because my partner, my ex, he didn't stand up for me. And like, that was a big reason why we're not together because I'm like, that's all I need you to do is fight for me. And he's like, oh no, bitch, you're not good enough. And I'm like, damn, why am I not good enough? But then I had to keep going back and I'm like, thinking about the foundation on which that relationship was built. And it, was, it wasn't it was built on that type of love. It was built on me chasing and me low-key. Damn, they're worse. Oh, let me stop talking. Um, <laughs> uh, Y'all, I was just fucked up. Like, I, I can tell you guys with 100% honesty that I was one of those type of girls that felt like, you know, you had to do, you had to be your best person. Like, you got to do whatever you got to do to make him happy and, you know, do anything to satisfy him like it was all about making my partner like happy like putting him on a pedestal low-key um and then it's like as I started going through this process I just realized like well what about me 
You know, like I, I want to feel love. I want to feel appreciated. And um, I'm not saying he didn't, but it's like I realized there was this imbalance that, and it was something that I deeply craved. Like I don't, I didn't. I think I never really realized like how much like yes, I really love uh, two things. I really love to be intellectually stimulated. I really like a partner that can make me. Um, that can challenge me and I feel like he's like teaching me something um but sometimes so it's like I used to feel like I was shooting for guys out of my league and that would make me feel like I had to work for the love you see do you understand what I'm saying and so that's I feel like that set me up for failure in all my relationships because it was like I was coming in overextending myself so it's like now that I understand that about myself and I understand that that comes from my childhood and from me not feeling like my needs were met or not valued and I felt like I had to be of service in order to have love, now I can correct that. And now I have a rule, no chasing love. Like I low-key want to just put it on my damn arm. No chasing love. No, no, no. Like I just can't. Like I can't. Mm -mm. I ain't chasing no fucking body. No more. <laughs> I ain't chasing my daddy. I ain't chasing nobody. Anyways, so uh, let's finish this up. <laughs> Next, observe your feelings, whether you act on them, and your angels can speak directly to you through your emotions revealed in these cards. However, you must stand fearlessly and observe your emotions. If you can do this, you have begun the journey into manifestation. You can walk the path you have pre you can walk the path you have previously only wished for. I want to read this again. Next, observe your feelings rather than acting on them, and your angels can speak directly to you through your emotions revealed in these cards. However, you must stand fearlessly and observe your emotions. If you can do this, you have begun the journey into manifestation. You can walk the path you have previously only wished for. Master emotional discipline and you master how to manifest anything. Told you. All right, so let's see what this card means. I'm going to hurry on up. Um, and stop telling my business. What is done is done. This card can indicate the end of a great emotional upset. The power to change direction for the better is supported in ruts. Your angels appear to protect you in the long run. This is a detour, not a no. Be here in the now. Things will change. Go where you are led for now. And so I guess I'll just continue telling my business. <laughs> Angel number 2213. Um, as I was realizing that, you know, how our relationship kind of started was a weird, weird foundation. Um, when we broke up, like I just had one rule. I'm like, I just want you to show me, like fight for me, like show me you want me. Um, and when he wasn't able to do that, I had to understand what is done is done. Like I had to love myself enough to be like, he's not good for me. Like, I don't give a damn how much I love him, how much I think about him. Like, he's not good for me right now. He's not supportive of my journey and where I'm going. And so I can't allow myself to continue to go down that way. And when I get sad or when I miss him, I have to be resilient and just know that I'm making the best decision for me. And if God could deliver him, God can deliver somebody that's 10 times better than him. Like, and I'm not saying that he's a shitty person, but I'm just saying that if God can give me somebody like him, when I wasn't in my best state, who can God deliver to me when I'm in my best state? You understand what I'm saying? Ah, you better understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just getting all my goddamn business away. Sorry. Okay, God, I'm listening. This path is obstructed. Reroute. The legend. Reggie Russ is a guardian angel. One day, two friends, Clint and Craig, are dismayed to discover Reggie blocking their path through the mountains with no way to get around him. Wondering why Reggie wanted to stop them and not dare to try to pass, they take another route. Reggie then moves on, having protected Clem and Craig from a landslide ahead that would have claimed their lives. Angel number 2350. So this brings me to my last point. And I guess this is going to be about why it's so important to align with a partner who is not only equally yoked, but somebody who is aligned with where you're trying to go. Because... We are here, you know, God put us, he made us in pairs, you know, he made, it's all about balance. It's all about equal. So if he made you, he made somebody that is for you. Now, if you choose to hit your wagon, if you choose to be with somebody who is not for you, how can you truly get on your path? It's eventually going to hinder your path. You're going to start having that resistance. And that resistance sometimes, oh my God, you guys have to read my article. Are you subscribed to honestlysense.com? Because I literally just talked about this in Malcolm Marie. But it's like, you have to... 
Matter of fact, we here now. Almost done. I said I wanted to stay under 30. So I'm going to say this and then we'll move. And then I'll wrap this up. Because I want you to understand why it's so important for you to... Um, and honestly, the archive is a month behind, so I'm not even going to, I can't link you to this. So if you really want to get the most recent newsletter, you got to make sure you subscribe. Um, when we get in relationships with another to validate our existence, each time we are setting ourselves up for failure, because we're asking this person to complete this part of yourself that you don't even know. I'm going to, I'm going to actually read this whole section. <clears throat> I'm going to start here. Sometimes, oftentimes, God, but the, okay. Da, da, da. Sometimes, oftentimes, God uses a person to get you to the one. If you look at every relationship as the one, you're setting yourself up for failure. But we are not taught to look at relationships this way. We are taught to be a writer and be loyal. We are fed since birth that love is hard. So instead of taking the universal hits, we take it as a personal challenge of endurance. See, for a long time, I hated myself for not like for not hating sincere. I hated that after he walked out on me, I still wanted and craved him. I didn't understand how we could have all of this chemistry and it not work. But sometimes this is the lesson. How much do you truly love ourselves? So many of us are unhappy in our lives. And instead of figuring out why we feel that way, we get into relationships with another to validate our existence. Each time we are setting ourselves up for failure because we're asking this person to complete a part of yourself that you don't even know. The truth is you can only become whole from within. What attracted me to Sincere was the very things I had in myself. His presence in my life reminded me of that and nothing more, which is much better than a kid or a ring, if you ask me. And you're number 2642. And so I read you that to tell to show you that it's like, we, we, sometimes we get into these relationships with people. Like, it's just like the saying for a reason, a season and a lifetime. And sometimes we get in, per, in, in, in situations with people for a reason. And sometimes we just get into them for a season. And that season is for us to kind of grow and evolve. All relationships are set for us to grow and evolve. And if you Hitch to somebody who is not on your path, you're hitched to not being able to grow and evolve. So let's just say that um, I think about this all the time. This Jody Aris is so wild. Like, I stay with me here. Jody Aris was in a relationship with another guy before she had a relationship with the guy she ended up, unfortunately, ki you know, um, killing pretty much. Now, imagine if that guy, I think they went back and forth a lot and then he ended up, you know, leaving her or something like that. And then she got with this guy. Now, what if that guy refused to let go? What if that guy just kept being in her life? That could have been him, you know, and I'm just, and I, and that's like a bizarre answer. But another thing I think about that mother, um, and unfortunately here in Detroit and Dearborn, um, this mother and her kids, that her, her husband killed all the kids and then like slit her throat and she was the only one that ended up surviving. And like, what if that was because she was with the wrong person? Like, I'm telling you these extreme examples because I want you to understand that's how extreme it is. I had a girl that um, used to do my nails and like, she showed me this picture of her when she was, you know, before she met her husband, two totally different people. Your partner, who you choose to uh, connect with in life, literally is a make or break, a life or death situation. So you should take it that serious. Take the hints that the universe is getting you so you don't end up in a dangerous situation. And I honestly feel that for somebody. If God is constantly pushing you out of this toxic relationship, take the hints. No matter how much it hurt, take the hints. Last message. This is a reroute, not an ending. The path is blocked and you are at an impasse, but the goal is still there. Do not wait for your present situation to change. Stay focused and find another path. So it's not changing. He has not tried to do the things that I want him to do. It's not going to work. Let it go. God is clearly trying to reroute me and you to something else. So let's allow God to do that, right? How adaptable am I? What does this card reveal about my emotions and my reactions to my delays? So that is what I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to leave you with that message of how adaptable am I 
what does this card reveal about my emotions and my reactions to my delays? And if you do get emotional or if you do find yourself feeling like, you know, hitting rock bottom, that's human. It's all about if you allow yourself to get back up. That really counts. All right, y'all, if this message was beneficial for you, please make sure you give me a thumbs up or subscribe so you will never miss out. Until we meet again, dream those dreams. Never let the internet rush you and never, ever, ever let someone tell you what you cannot do. Angel number 3010, namaste. Talk to you soon.